So where do we pick up from from our last conversation? We were talking about your journey so far. Yep. First fight, decision, second fight, knockout. Yeah, so it was my, um, I had five fights in total. Um, my first two were for charity. Yeah. Um, and this is one so, you know, enthusiastic about getting involved with the MAD project because you guys do great things. Um, my first two were for charity and I just love that feeling of giving. Um, yeah. So it enabled me to actually challenge myself physically and mentally but at the same time give back at the same time you know obviously raise awareness for a really good cause too and you know I hope to be doing a lot more with man than my three fights after that were amateur and they were you know very challenging to step off uh, yeah. in that but again uh, I've won all five the, the, the previous three have been really challenging but they've kind of set me up into this good mindset to, yeah. to overcome physical and mental challenges just like obviously a lot of the kids are facing yeah. from 11 to 16 and I can't wait for the young people to see you it's going to be amazing <laughs> because Dan not only are you mentally strong and disciplined and which young people need to sort of stay focused challenging yourself always spoke about you know taking yourself to that next step and leaving no stone unturned but also that softer side of, you know, it's important to look out for people and give back to charity. Yeah. And I think that part is just as much important for your well-being as striving to be the best physically as well, isn't it? 100%, 100%, thank you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's something that, um, like I said, it's a journey. And then you kind of like, when you go through these challenges, physically and mentally, you kind of understand that everyone around you is also got yeah. physical and mental challenges. And it enables you to just have a bit of compassion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the struggle that you're facing preparing for something like a fight is the same struggle that a mother, a single mum or a, you know, a kid that's a, like between 11 and 16 is facing. All people different, people from different diverse challenges, um, they're facing it too. It's just yeah. a different type of fight, that's all. Yeah. yeah, but the fight inside mentally is always the it's, same, isn't yeah, it? Just keep that's, going. That's always the biggest one. Yeah. That's always the biggest one. And then a lot of people, what they're doing is they don't understand that if you can face that mental challenge first in the right way, you don't have to physically attack things. And I think that's where a lot of the community are misunderstanding. Yeah. So they're just, they're going to autopilot like a default. Yeah. And it's all physical. Whether they need to physically overcome this challenge, they need to physically overcome someone else, when actually it's all about yeah. mental. So where did this journey start for you then? What inspired you to get involved in sports, particularly boxing? and uh, bodybuilding yeah so my dad was a pro boxer as well so he gave me he taught me the foundations from young nice. and i kind of that's given me the sense of um you know the like the understanding of how important it is that at these young ages whether it be from early ages or from 11 to 16 just how important it is to get a foundational skill whether it be boxing whether it be you know any kind of sport whether it be creative design that you guys do it's massively important because your foundational skills set you up for life yeah. And, and I'm understanding that now, especially at these you know ages now, just how important that is. So if I yeah. can help some you know young people to understand that and gain that that underpinning foundational knowledge and experience, you know that'd be great. Yeah, and I think for a lot of young people, particularly in Birmingham, particularly that transition of like leaving school and going to college, their routine changes, their yeah. culture changes, yeah. and like you were just speaking about the foundation skills of actually staying focused, keeping that routine, staying solid is. Yeah. It's really important to getting where you want to be. So can you share a defining moment early in your sporting career that solidified your passion for like these disciplines? Yeah, so I would say um, a crossover from bodybuilding and boxing. First of all, boxing, you know, it's very mentally challenging. It's daunting because you go into, you know, you're going to fight with somebody else that also yeah. wants to win. And there can only be one winner. And this is a, a classic example of the things that happen in life. It could be an interview and only one person's going to get it. It could be, uh, you know, a girl and only one person's going to get it. Yeah. But there are many other opportunities and some people, you know, are very fixated on one thing. But I've understood and, you know, overcoming that challenge enabled me to realise that it's not so much about that one thing, it's about preparation. Yeah. Because if you prepare, you know, in the best possible way for something, you're going to win no matter what. Yeah. You feel so, in like, um, if you feel such achievements in your preparation and such success from it that it doesn't matter whether this one's going to fail or not. Yeah. It really doesn't matter because you've gained the skills. Yeah. And I think like helping young people to understand that and you know it's going to be a big, big thing. Um, my second one was bodybuilding. Now this isn't something that's completely physical when it comes to the end. Um, it's more I say mental because mm -hmm. you know you've gone through resisting foods, your favourite foods, um, sacrificing you know going out with your friends mm -hmm. and stuff like that. 
to then go on stage and be compared against a lot of people and it's not a physical, you don't have any physical control over this, it's just based on judges and their opinion. So it's massively important to have mental strength yeah. and be confident within yourself. So, you know, a lot of kids are looking at social media now yeah. and they're seeing social media and the fact that, you know, people have good physiques and they yeah. see discipline behind it. And when they see discipline behind it, they understand that I want discipline as well. And, you know, the MAD project, you do great things in actually, you know, uh, teaching discipline, mm -hmm. uh, giving skills, creative skills and stuff like that for the things that you do. And I think that showing kids, you know, the end product yeah. and what, yeah. you know, Someone, someone like me and the other guys at Mad and yeah. Smith, etc. You know they've achieved a lot of big things, and it's come from that. Brilliant, and I think you you said something really important there for that. I think really relates to young people. Whether you win or lose, it's just keep on going. Because we work with a lot of young people and it could be so many different scenarios for why they feel like they've lost at yes. that moment in time. And they may feel like this is like the lowest moment for them. Yeah. Um, what could you say to them in that moment that could potentially help them get back up? Yeah, if you're given 100%, you're actually at the highest point. Yeah. Because you are a lot more mentally prepared than you ever was. You've achieved something that most people couldn't achieve and you've gone through a very hard route. So no matter how much it feels like you've failed, you're at the highest point because you're a lot more yeah. prepared than when you started. And it's all a journey. Um, everyone in this room here right now, we've faced a lot of rejections, yeah. a lot of failures. But the preparation leading up to that set us up for the next one. Yeah. So we were better prepared for the next yeah. interview or, or, or fight or bodybuilding competition, whatever it may be. So you, you might feel like you're at a, your lowest point, you're actually at the highest point and you're ahead of your, your, um, your competition in the next. Yeah. Year. Um, what do you think was more challenge? What's more challenging for you, going in a boxing ring against an opponent where there's someone there or going to bodybuild where there's a massive crowd watching you? I would say it's really tough, it's a really tough one because there have been different um, levels, there have been different circumstances in life um, and it all, you know, one thing I've, I've learnt about this journey and why I love doing it so much is when I look back on some of the victories, it wasn't so much the trophy, it wasn't so much the money or the, the respect or anything, it was what I was facing alongside it. Yeah. I was going through maybe some stuff, any stuff that every, everyone would go through but I managed to do this alongside it. Yeah. And you know, kids can do the same thing. Yeah. So if they're going through things in life, just do something creative, do something that's gonna make you proud alongside it so that when you do achieve, you'll be like, I achieved this while I was doing X, Y, Z. I, I was managed to create this yeah. or work with these people while I was getting off the street, while I was you know, going through some family stuff. And then when you get that achievement, you always link it back to that. Would you say that's the biggest challenge of becoming a champion of multiple categories, being able to juggle personal life as well as your sporting life? Yeah, 100%. And then you enter rooms, um, and me and Dan, Dan Smith, who, who is also Dan Smith, I uh, was talking about this earlier, but you enter different rooms, and then when people have achieved things, you know, you, you feel like, I can be part of this. And um, the fact that the, the, the youth are collaborating and working with guys like yourself, who have been there, done it and you're in a good position like you yeah. are now, they can see that and say, you know what, I'm going through some stuff, but so is he. Yeah. And look at the position he's in, I could one day be there. Yeah. And then you work, go into different rooms, they introduce you to new people. Um, and I think that's the, like a really key thing. So it's, it's, always, it's always reflecting on what could go right, yeah. as opposed to what's gone wrong. That's amazing. And I think so many young people need to hear that about just constantly staying focused and being around positive people. Yeah whether it's people that are constantly training, like the bodybuilders and boxers you're around, they constantly want good for themselves, constantly challenging themselves, which almost has a positive effect on you regardless of yeah. your surroundings. So how do you, how do you maintain motivation? Because I think this is something a lot of young people want to hear because they get inspired by a lot of people, but often that, that inspiration doesn't last that long and a lot of people end up taking that back step in life. Yeah. Um, almost that one step forward, two steps back scenario. So how do you maintain that motivation and discipline throughout your long training periods? Yeah, what I always do is try to visualize. So I try and visualize where I'm gonna be at the end of this journey and the things that I'm going to, the fruits of my labor yeah. in advance. So I kind of just take myself away from a current situation and say, 
I'm going to be there feeling like this, like, which is going to be a good feeling. So yeah. right now I don't feel great, but in the future I'm going to be feeling great. I'm going to have this, I'm going to have that. You know, and then it's, this is why it's really important to be around good people. Mm -hmm. Because when you achieve something, they give you a, a, a feeling that you remember. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Respect, accolades, all these things. And then you remember that. And you say, at the end of the tunnel, you know, you're going to get the, the good the good things that are going to come your way. So yeah. it's just trying to visualize yourself. So it's tough for a lot of young people that have not yet been in that position. Mm -hmm. But then I feel, I feel like it's our job to encourage them, reward them, um, you know, give them that sense of satisfaction yeah. so that they feel that the next time yeah. they, say, like, they can remember that. It's like a positive addiction, isn't it? That's, That's it. the way you can almost describe success. Yes. And for a lot of our young people, when they get to that point, yeah. um, where they feel proud of themselves, or they feel like this is a big moment for me, yeah. for us as staff, it's always just reminding them that this is yours, this is yours, yeah. and no one could ever take it away. No one in this world can turn back time and turn back all the positive things you've done. Yeah. That's yours. Yeah. You can keep that, and all you've got to do now is just keep on building on Definitely. it. Definitely. Especially like the younger, um, some of the, you know, the younger individuals that are coming from underprivileged, you know, backgrounds, yeah. you might not get that sense of um, pride from their, maybe like, you know, peers, friends, mm -hmm. parents, mm -hmm. whatever, and then guys like yourself and people in this room can give it them, yeah. and, and, you know, enlighten them with that, and then they can remember, they can think, you know what, well, actually, I have something to strive to. Yes, and it's the same for us, when we see the moments, you know, no one can take that off us either, you can't tell us we've had a bad day or a bad week at work, we've just seen a young person make it from A to B, you know, we, we're great now. Um, so what, what made you decide to pledge 10 grand to Sport Birmingham? Yeah, so I collaborated with Dan Smith, who I've seen doing great things, I and mean, he's been doing great things for a while. Um, we've worked together on ser um, previous things, um, and especially within the sporting sector. So we both have the experience in that, and watching the, you know, some, some of the stuff that both Dan has done and the MAD project as well, and yeah. I was just like, yeah, when this opportunity came, I was like, this is a great um, you know, pledge, and if I can you know, give back to the community, this is one of the best routes to do it. Mm. Through somewhere, you know, like it's local, it's like homegrown, it's yeah. like giving back to somewhere that I'm familiar with, and some of the, you know, I can have a rationale with as well, and, and I can relate to them. Yeah, it gives me a sense of, you know, well-being as well. Yeah. So it's, I'm going to feel good about what I'm doing, the people I'm working with, and there will be a lot more in the future too. Nice. Anyone watching this, call your kids Dan Smith, they work hard. <laughs> <laughs> so my last question for you then is, what, what legacy would you like to leave behind in the sporting world? One that um, people can look at and say, I want to do something similar. So whatever it may be, whether as long as I'm pe giving people a good, um, you know, feeling physically, mm -hmm. emotionally. So whether I'm helping them to lose weight, whether I'm helping them to eat better, whether I'm helping someone get off the streets. You know, I want to be able to influence other people to do that also. Yeah. So I leave a legacy behind that I've been doing good. I've raised money. I've worked with good people, and um, um, you know, they continue to do positive things also. That that's that's really good to hear, and I think for us as well. I think you've already left a massive legacy in terms of engaging with the MAD program. You know, we've got young people, like, like I was saying to you earlier, off camera, we're engaging with about 300 young people this week alone across the summer. So to know that potentially these young people will get to meet you and you've got these inspiring stories and it's not always been sunshine and rainbows. If anything, it's been the opposite. It's been hard work and graft and hard work and graft to get to the point where you need to be. I think that that's everything for us to hear them stories from a successful person like yourself you. to come back to you know to the city and say this is how you can this is how you can make things so yeah thank you to you and thank you very much and I look forward to obviously you know we're clapping and working with you brilliant